Anthony Warlow was young and handsome. He was also the Phantom of the Opera. He loved Handel and Nat King Cole. And he loved Celia. Theirs was the perfect marriage. Just like Eric Siegel's bestseller love story. And like that movie and novel, one year ago, cancer came to split them apart. Suddenly, the singing sensation had to think about life without a song. My life without a song would not be worth living. And that comes from the soul, because I sing from the soul. The one thing that happened to me when I woke up in the hospital, I just wanted to see a tree and listen to a bird, and now I cherish everything that I see and everything that I do. And singing now is so much more beautiful and experienced for me. If it was everywhere and if he was going to die, then I would want to die very shortly after him. And then Celia and Anthony had only been married a couple of years, but had no time to taste his phenomenal success. Things happened too quickly. Anthony got the phantom role, the pinnacle of his young career, before he was even 30, and he collected all of the awards for this magical musical that's collected over $80 million at the Melbourne box office. Open up your mind, let your fantasies unwind in this dark, which you know you cannot The phantom, which must always be sung with the mask on, except for this single performance, was probably the most prestigious role ever in Australian theatre. Let your mind start a journey. Yet Anthony Waller walked away from it. He left the Phantom Fever, the fans, and even Federucci, Maestro Federucci, the famous ghost of Melbourne's Princess Theatre, who'd taken care of the young superstar for more than a year. Anthony Warlow left the Phantom very much a household name. Almost a million Australians had seen his triumph here. And he'd proven that he wasn't too young for the role. They tried to tell him that he was too young for the Australian Opera, he was too young for Guys and Dolls, he was too young for Les Mis, and certainly he was too young for the lead role in The Phantom. The fact is, Anthony Warlow was too young for only one thing. He was too young for cancer. Saw him in uh, Countess Maritza at the Opera House. And my wife and myself, Eve, when he jumped on the stage, he thought, hey, what is this? This is fantastic. You know, he lit up the stage. It, it, this funny word, charisma, mm -hmm. I mean, he's got it. Tommy Tico is the grand old maestro of Australian music. Over the past 50 years or so, he's worked with everybody from Dame Joan to John Farmer. Tommy, without a song, the day would never end. Without a song, the road would never bend. You can't imagine this bloke without a song. No. Yes. Well, he told me that when he's happy, which is most of the time, he just starts singing instinctively. He does the dishes or he's out mowing the lawn or whatever and he sings. When he is sick or when he's feeling down, he just doesn't sing. Now, this is a story that's absolutely filled with irony. Comfortably in remission now, Anthony can almost see himself filming this music video just last year, just weeks before his cancer was discovered. And the song, well, it's called Being Alive. timing was extraordinary. The day before Anthony Warlow and John Farnham, Angry Anderson and the rest of the all-star record-breaking cast of Jesus Christ Superstar was to hold its first press conference. It was a really busy time for Anthony Warlow. He came into the studio to sing live and promote his second album, which of course went platinum. He was in great voice. But the irony is that that day he decided to wear a tie. As he did up the tie, he noticed that the collar of his shirt was a little bit tight, that he had a lump on the side of his neck just here, about the size of a grape. But the show must go on. I won't send roses And roses soon A couple of hours later, he collapsed to his hotel room. The doctor diagnosed it as exhaustion, but he said that the lump worried him. The next day, they cut it out, and they found that it was malignant. For Anthony and Celia, the nightmare had just begun. So I held his hand very tightly, got him through his panic. Then I remember going outside um, and just falling to pieces quietly in the corridor. 
And I just, I wanted to be by myself, and I just walked around um, the block from the hospital and just cried and cried and cried for a while. But you decided, to both of you, that you're going to fight this. You're going to try oh, definitely. Um, I was given, I've been told, uh, some very heavy chemotherapy. Uh, and now and then, I really did feel like I wasn't going to pull through. But... Um, from the drugs, from the not drugs. from the disease. Yes. Yeah. But of course, I knew that, that they were, you know, the whole idea was they basically kill you and then bring you back to life each time. But it was a very public illness, wasn't it? Was that good or bad? The groundswell of support that came was literally overwhelming. I had no idea that a country could get behind one person so um, emotionally. And uh, I had letters, I mean, over a thousand letters uh, through the, the period of time. I used to read, read these letters to Celia with the voices, saying, look, look, 30 years ago, dear, I had this, and there was, uh, we had the, uh, what they called the cobalt treatment. And look, I'm 86 and I'm still kicking, I'm marvellous. <laughs> and that, that just kept us going, you know. And we had, we had letters, uh, suggestions from, you know, um, eating charcoal to orange, uh, peels. to orange peels. And I'm sure Simon O'Donnell had a similar thing. Simon O'Donnell's Simon. earlier battle with cancer, which was also lymphoma, had been just as public as Anthony Warlow's. And, coincidentally again, the day Anthony began his long chemotherapy treatment, O'Donnell was on television talking about his own victory over cancer. Simon O'Donnell was to be an inspiration. I firmly believe the strongest uh, thing you can have, the strongest treatment you give yourself, and the greatest opportunity you give yourself is with your mind. I was asleep. The television was obviously on over my bed and I woke up and I looked up and saw myself singing because you come to me. I thought I, I've died, I've gone to hell and Ray Martin is repeating all these, <laughs> <laughs> all these items of mine from the past six years.